Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Fantasy Football Fellas channel. Back with a little bit of a different episode today. Normally, it's a, a Cameron's Corner episode, but we are in the middle of mock draft season. And with the NFL draft, the next big event coming you know, in the, in the offseason, it is time to speculate without end over how the NFL draft will play out and who's at the top of the board, who are the values, who are the steals, who are the overrated players, right? And that's what I'm here to do today. So we're going to quickly go through Mock Draft 2.0. We, we hinted at a Mock Draft 1.0 over on our TikTok page. We also posted a hint of our 2.0 over on TikTok. So go follow us there. You can follow us on Twitter as well. Let's just get right on into it. So number one, first pick overall, Jacksonville Jaguars. Let's just keep this as short as possible. They need to help Trevor Lawrence as much as possible. And by interviewing guys like Byron Leftwich and then eventually hiring Doug Peterson, it seems like Jacksonville is very, very committed to helping out Trevor Lawrence in whatever way, whatever way possible. So while Aiden Hutchinson could be the better pick, in my opinion, just because he's just the more well-rounded and more uh, pro-ready maybe is the best word to put to say, I guess. Evan Neal is, is the pick here. He's the all around tackle in this draft. He's a mauler in the run game. He's solid in pass protection. He may not be as, you know, flashy as some guys like Iquanu or cross, but Neal is your safest and securest tackle to put on the left side for Lawrence. So, with that, number two, and we're going to go with a little bit of a shocker here. We're going Kyle Hamilton, the safety out of Notre Dame here at number two. I get it. Safeties don't traditionally go this high. Personally, the highest I've ever seen a safety is number six overall. And safeties just normally do not have the same positional value as a quarterback, as an edge rusher, or an offensive tackle. But when you look at Detroit... They really need, it's not specifically leadership that they need, but they need someone to solidify the back end of this defense. They've got some good talent up front with guys like Ali McNeil and Levi Wuzuriki, and you've got edge rushers, Trey Flowers, and the Aquara brothers. A little early for a linebacker. Secondary is young. Give it some time. Maybe you can grab a corner in the second if you really want to address the outside of the secondary. But Kyle Hamilton, to me, is the one player in this draft that is the generational talent. Safeties like him do not come, come out of the draft very often. This dude can line up in the box. He can cover. He's got range when he covers. He's got size and length and speed. This dude, if you can put him in the, you know, the back end of your defense, he's going to be the staple for your defense for at least the next seven, eight years. Yes, you have to re-sign him, but you re-sign a player like Kyle Hamilton. You draft a guy like Kyle Hamilton at number two just because he is just that talented. He's got the skills and the assets to really become an all-pro sooner rather than later. So Kyle Hamilton at number two, you could, you know, there's also an argument that Detroit could look, you know, towards Hutchinson if he's there, obviously the Michigan guy, or Kayvon Thibodeau. Everyone's kind of out on Thibodeau. But if you give him confidence, if you give him tools and, and, and you know, time to develop, this dude could be a home run pick. So those guys could be in consideration and in the conversation as well, but I, like I said, Kyle Hamilton, the 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 generational talent of this draft, it's going to be hard to pass him up here at this spot. On to number three here with the Houston Texans, and I have them taking the next best player available. They are in full blown rebuild at this point. You just got to take the best player that's on the board, and to me, that's Aiden Hutchinson. When I watch Aiden Hutchinson, it is. Very, very similar to the Bosa brothers, Joey and Nick. They they play with speed, with aggression, with physicality. And there's all the minor, you know, the bend and the arm length, all that stuff. But when you can watch film and say, 
oh, this guy plays exactly like this professional guy does, you can't go wrong. And like I said before, full-blown rebuild in Houston going on, just grab the best player on the board at this point. You can find guy. I mean, you can maybe look at Eka McWanu to kind of put on the opposite side, help out your quarterback in Davis Mills. But is he the best player, though, to help you in this rebuild? I'm not sure he is that guy. That's why Hutchinson is the choice here at number three. Number four, this might shock some people just because so many people are out on him. But Kayvon Thibodeau here at number four to the Jets. Robert Sala used to be the defensive coordinator in San Francisco where he had a defensive line that was beyond difficult for any team, any quarterback to beat just because they could beat you so many ways, right? You had, at one point, DeForest Buckner. You had Eric Armstead. You had Nick Bosa, right? You had talent all across that defensive line. And that's the one thing that's missing from the Jets' defense in order to take another step forward. They have guys like they have a nice piece in Quentin Williams in the middle. They do have a solid piece in Carl Lawson. But let's let's be honest. Carl Lawson coming off an injury is not going to generate as much pass rush as you need to win in the NFL. Kayvon Thibodeau with Robert Sala in that defense is going to be so much fun to watch. So you could also make an argument for guys like Eka McGuanu, even Charles Cross to be the pick here to continue to build up the offensive line and help out Zach Wilson. But when it, you've got a guy like Kayvon Thibodeau, who is just a freak of nature when it comes to athleticism, size, and strength, you, you can't pass him up. So top four so far, we have Evan Neal, Kyle Hamilton, Aiden Hutchinson, and Kayvon Thibodeau. Number five here to the Giants. We all know they have to go online. They have to. And it really comes down to Charles Cross or Eka McGuanu. And when you've got a talent like Saquon Barkley in the backfield, you need to find a lineman that, one, is versatile, and two, can run block like no tomorrow. That guy is Eka McWanu. Ekwanu has played at tackle, has played at guard, and he, you know, the pass protection is okay, right? And, and that'll get better as he gets into the league and gets more comfortable with, with schematics and stuff. But this dude... When he's in the run game, you do not want to be in his way. He will he will manhandle you. That's the best way to put it. He is just a beast in the run game. So with Dayball and this new offense that's going to be in New York, Iquanu is a great pick to begin this transition into this new offense. Number six here for the Panthers the Panthers are in a very interesting situation where if any of the guys in the top five fall out of the top five, the Panthers could more than, you know, they, they would be wise to snatch whoever that is up. If Thibodeau falls out of the top five, Carolina should really consider taking Thibodeau. If Kyle Hamilton falls out of the top five, Carolina should consider taking Hamilton here. But Since those top five guys are off the board, it comes down to offensive line and secondary. They've got a lot of pending free agents in the secondary. Stephon Gilmore and Dante Jackson, who were actually the the starters for them this year, um, both are free agents. And yeah, you've got guys like J.C. Horn and C.J. Henderson on on the roster. So is cornerback really the, the, the... the right pick here, and they spent in a first round draft pick on JC Horn last year. So, team, is it likely for them to spend another first round pick on a corner? Probably not. If you're looking for depth, rounds three and four are going to be the best spots to find depth. So, with that being said, Charles Cross, the third and final kind of top 10 caliber offensive lineman, is the choice here. And they just need offensive line help. They, they Their tackles are not good enough. The guards are okay. But when you've got a guy like Sam Darnold, you need to really, really beef up the offensive line if you want to see him produce average results. <laughs> um, maybe a quarterback isn't a play here, but I've said this many, many times. I just don't think a quarterback goes in the top 10. 
I've argued top 15, but this is the NFL. It's a quarterback hungry league. So they're always going to be looking for quarterbacks, no matter how early it is and if they have to reach or not. But they've committed to Sam Darnold for at least one more year by ensuring his fifth year option. And I think going forward, Charles Cross can be a staple in your offensive line. So on to number seven, and this is back with the Giants. This is a this is the pick that they received from the Justin Fields trade last year with the Chicago Bears. And you think line O line again, but I think the best way to describe why they shouldn't go O line with this second pick in the first round is ex- is the exact same strategy that you use with something like the stock market. When you are buying stocks, you do not want to buy stocks that are similar to each other. And in, in, in the, the, the phrase is you don't want to put your eggs all in one basket because if the market goes down and let's get specific in this segment of the market where you may have bought Adidas and Nike and Under Armour, if that segment of the market begins to decline, all three of those stocks decline. Same thing here with multiple first round picks. If you hit your wagon to all offensive linemen, yeah, you guarantee that, or you have more of a guarantee that one hits more than, you know, you have, I guess, the insurance that one will hit more than both. But again, if the line doesn't work out, you've then wasted first round talent or first round draft picks on guys that are going to struggle. So for me, you need to look on the defensive side of the ball. And you could look edge, uh, put a guy opposite of uh, Aziz Ojolari, and I wouldn't hate that pick at all. I wouldn't hate a linebacker pick here at all. Um, but I think the biggest need is on the outside. James Bradbury is a is a great piece. Adore Jackson is meh. So you can upgrade there, and I think that is a big uh, the, the the biggest need when it comes to the defense. Yes, linebackers got some holes, but you can find good linebackers in rounds two and three. So the pick here is Ahmad Sauce Gardner, and this dude is a beast. He's got length, he's got size, and he's got speed that uh, he can he he won't get burned by wide receivers. And his specialty is impressed man coverage where he can line up right on the offensive line and he can jam receivers. He can he he sticks on the receivers like glue. That's the best way to put it. And in this new system that they're bringing in with Wink Martindale's uh, defense, press coverage is a must. So I think Ahmad Gardner here at seven to the Giants. It's a good fit. It's a good need. It may it, it makes sense in that regard. So. Here at number eight, Falcons, again, they did much, much, much better than their uh, than what they were expected to do last year. They kind of accepted the rebuild by trading away guys like Julio Jones, and yet they were, if I'm not mistaken, three games under 500 and were right at that 500 mark all season long. So this team can't win football games, um, but the victories that they had, Every game, I believe, except one or two, came against teams that were under 500. All the teams that they played that were over 500, they got lost. They 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 got smoked. So, um, the rebuild is still on, and when it's a rebuild, like I said before, you look for the best player available. And my pick here may or may not, you know, make a ton of sense. But again, it's the best player in my book. And when he, when a player has this high of a ceiling, I think you have to take him here. And that guy's Derek Stingley Jr., the cornerback out of LSU. He's battled with injuries and maybe motivation issues the past couple of years, but I think playing him opposite AJ Terrell is going to do him a world of good. It gets him the motivation that he's not the the number one guy. If he wants to be the number one guy, he can go compete for it. But yeah, for sure, go for it. But he doesn't need to. He doesn't have that pressure that he had after his freshman year at LSU, where he was the top shutdown corner. But na- but then after his freshman year, he couldn't really get back to that to that form. 
I think with Atlanta, he has the best shot of getting back to that form just because, like I said, he doesn't have to be the number one outside corner for this team. AJ Terrell could do that just fine. So Steen leads the pick here. I wouldn't be surprised if they also go edge just because their defensive line has never had a solidified, uh, or I shouldn't say a solidified, a bona fide edge rusher. But like I said, the upside with Stingley is way, way, way too much to pass up at number eight. We're on to the Broncos here at number nine. My assumption is they trade for a veteran quarterback of any kind of caliber, whether that is Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, or is some or someone like Jimmy Garoppolo. They're going to trade for one of those guys just because Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke are just not the answers. So that being said, this pick probably won't belong to the Broncos if they go get a guy like Rodgers or Wilson. But for the sake of this mock draft, I'm saying that they go after a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo. So they do keep the first round pick. And I think they kind of shock us again a little bit. And they'll take Jermaine Johnson, the edge from Florida State, the the big Super Bowl or a Senior Bowl winner um, a couple weeks ago down in Mobile, Alabama. They, the Broncos last year in the draft, had Justin Fields right there for him at the number eight pick, or at the number nine pick, excuse me. And they went in the route of let's build up elsewhere, right? And they took Pat Sertan, and even they took they took Pat Sertan over guys like Micah Parsons and, and Justin Fields, who I mentioned earlier. So they're going to look for the best overall talent and in a division where you're going up against Patrick Mahomes twice a year, Justin Herbert twice a year, heck, even Derek Carr twice a year. Getting into the backfield is what's going to disturb those quarterbacks the most. Bradley Chubb is a great piece. Malik Reed is not the guy on the opposite side. And he's also a pending free agent, if I'm not mistaken. So grabbing a guy like Jermaine Johnson, who is just unblockable. He has speed. He has strength on the outside. So pairing him up with Bradley Chubb is a dangerous, dangerous sight to see for opposing quarterbacks. And to finish out here, the top 10, uh, the Jets are back on the clock with a pick from Seattle that came all the way back from that Jamal Adams trade. So they're still cashing in on this thing. But I have them taking Devin Lloyd, the linebacker from Utah, over guys like Trent McDuffie, the cornerback from Washington, and even Kenyon Green, the lineman from Texas A&M. The thing with Devin Lloyd is that he has the size and athleticism that you also see in guys like Fred Warner. And the Jets need to kind of solidify this linebacking group that they have. CJ Mosley is a solid piece, but he's aging. There's really no one else there besides him. So grabbing a guy like Devin Lloyd who can cover, who can rush, who can blitz, who can run, you know, run stop, who can run sideline to sideline, this is a modern-day NFL linebacker, and I think the Jets would be wise to go get Devin Lloyd here at number 10. And they've got two picks in the second round, too, so if they really want to address offense, sure, they can maybe take an offensive guy here at number 10. But for me, I think you grab some elite uh, prospects like Devin Lloyd and Kayvon Thibodeau to beef up the defense a little bit, and then you, you go to the offense here in the second round where you can get a weapon if you want, build up the, the old line or, or, or whatever it is. But like I said, two elite prospects and Devin Lloyd and Kayvon Thibodeau, I think that's a home run for the Jets. So there's a top 10 for you, and we'll kind of speed through the rest of the first round uh, just because this is getting kind of kind of long already. But um, Washington Commanders here at 11, they take Matt Corral, the quarterback, out of Ole Miss. To me, Corral is the QB1 of this class. I know people say that Malik Willis is. Some people say that Kenny Pickett is. Um, the thing that separates Corral for me, though, is that he lost top weapons and his efficiency in production didn't skip a beat. Um, and he's also got this sneaky athleticism to him that if you don't pay attention to him, he can he can burn you. So I think Matt Corral here at 11 is a great, great spot for uh, for him to go to. 
Uh, Trent McDuffie is the number 12 pick to the Vikings. They just need corners. Uh, you could make an argument for edge, but they've got some solid edge rushers already. Um, McDuffie is just uh, is an awesome, awesome cornerback to have in your room. He reads the game well. He's fast. He rarely, rarely gets beat downfield. So I think McDuffie here at 12 is a great pick for Minnesota. 13 here for the Browns. You could look defense just because you have no defensive line at this point. JD, uh, Jadavian Clowney's a free agent and uh, Malik McDowell. And I'm blanking on the other... Um, on the other defensive tackle, but they're missing. They're, they're going to lose three defensive linemen um, this off season. So they could go defensive line here, but I have them taking Drake London, the receiver out of USC. I just, this dude is awesome. He's got size. He's got ability after the catch that you just don't see in a six, five guy. Um, but I think the thing that makes this a good fit for Cleveland is that Drake London, because of his size, and he's shown it in, in in his tape as well. This dude run blocks. And in this offense in Cleveland where it is a run first offense, getting a wide receiver on the outside to help block is going to be crucial. Uh, you could also see Traylon Burks go here just because he also has size. But for me, Drake London, just the biggest target for, you know, Baker Mayfield to get the ball to, could run block, and he's got rare, rare, rare athleticism for 6'5". Uh, wide out number 14 here for the Baltimore Ravens uh, they, they they need to build up the trenches one way or another whether that's on the defensive side or it is on the offensive side um, for me I think they need to build up the O-line just a little bit more um, that that helps them improve the run game with J.K. Dobbins and a healthy Lamar Jackson um, you may be thinking oh yeah it's Tyler Lindebaum actually it's I'm going Trevor Penning, the the tackle from Northern Iowa. Penning has the mindset of no one's ever going to beat me. Even if you stick him in at guard, this dude is going to be trouble for defenses. He's got size, he can move really well too. So I love the fit that Penning has here with Baltimore. Linderbaum would also be a great pick. He can just slide right in at, at center for them. But for me, Penning is the high the the um how do I say this? He's the guy that can take a de- your offensive line to the next level. Linderbaum can too, but for me, Penning just fits their their uh their system a little bit better. So next two picks belong to Philly. Um, and I have them taking linebacker to Kobe Dean. Yeah. And I know that the GM, uh, Howie Roseman rarely takes linebackers as high, but Nicobe Dean is the reason why you do and why that can change. Um, he's a, another prototypical, um, linebacker that can really, really kind of blossom into a much, much better linebacker in the NFL. Um, and then at 16, I had them taking Traylon Burks, the wide receiver out of Arkansas, a big target for Hertz. And like I mentioned before with the Cleveland pick, this dude can do it all. And he's got some, you know, ability after the catch that you just don't see first guys, his size. So Nicobe Dean and Traylon Burks, there are the picks for Philly. And then we turn our attention over to the chargers and they they need some defensive help, but I think where they are positioned and um, how good this roster really is as it stands, I think they can go after a guy like Jameson Williams. And Jameson Williams is one of the most elite deep threats in this class. And yes, he's torn his ACL, so who knows if that can be repeated in the league. Um but I think with the Chargers, Jameson Williams has time to recover with the Chargers just because this team is so good. And once he is healthy, you line up bump with guys like Josh Palmer and Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler, and that is that is a dangerous, dangerous little uh, weapon room that you've got in L.A. So... James Williams, the pick there for the Chargers. And at 18 come the Saints. And the Saints very well could take a quarterback. Uh, but I think 
they're going to either go with Taysom Hill one more time or Jameis Winston one more time in one way or another on, on some sort of team-friendly deal because Winston is also a free agent. So with that assumption, I think they grab the next just best player on this board as they go through this tumultuous period where they have no cap space. <laughs> They just they just need to grab best players uh, that are available, and for me, that's Garrett Wilson, the wide receiver out of Ohio State. And yes, that is three receivers in a row. Um, but I think the thing with Wilson is that he he he's just you can't pass him up because he's again just this good for eighteen in this draft. There's a there's an argument to be made that he could go 13, and there's even an argument that he could go top 10 if Atlanta th- really, really thinks that he's the best player on the board at number 8. Um, you just need to get a, a target for whoever the quarterback is going to be. And with the uncertainty of Michael Thomas, getting some insurance with Garrett Wilson is going to, to help out this offense in many, many ways. So... Wilson is the pick there for the Saints, and we're back with the Eagles, their third first-round pick in this draft, and they need to beef up the defensive line. Um, And I have them taking Trayvon Walker, the edge rusher, out of Georgia. And the biggest reason why Walker is the pick here over guys like David Ojabo and George Karloftis is that Walker has versatility where you can put him on the outside, but you can also play him on the inside. And I think... With Derek Barnett becoming a free agent, Brandon Graham getting up there in age, Trayvon Walker kind of keeps up with the theme of a big and physical defensive line that Philly is trying that has that Philly has always tried to go for. Um, teams are going to fall in love with his size, the strength that he has, and just the overall you know agility that he has for his size. Um, so he, there's a good chance that he even goes earlier than 19. Um, but like I said, just all the teams in front, it makes more sense for the guys that they took over Walker. So this is a great fit for Philly here in their third pick in the first round. So as we enter then into our twenties and and then into our final two picks of the first round, um, let's just recap here quickly. Um, Evan Neal at one, Kyle Hamilton at two, Aiden Hutchinson at three, Kayvon Thibodeau four, five is Eka McWanu, six is Charles Cross, seven is Ahmad Gardner, eight is Derek Stingley, nine is Jermaine Johnson, uh, ten is Devin Lloyd, eleven is Matt Corral, Trent McDuffie here at twelve, Drake London at thirteen, Trevor Penning at fourteen, uh, Nicobe Dean and Traylon Burks to the Eagles at fifteen and sixteen. Jameson Williams at 17, Garrett Wilson 18, Trayvon Walker here at 19. And now we go to Pittsburgh here at 20. This one is just a simple, simple fit. Malik Willis, the quarterback out of Liberty. Mike Tomlin was raving about him at the Senior Bowl. And I think if Malik Willis is here at 20, um, they, they, they will take Willis. So... Pretty simple there. We go to number 21 with the New England Patriots, and there are a lot of different ways that the Patriots can go. They could go with an edge rusher. They could also go linebacker. They they could go wide receiver. Um, but Belichick always likes to beef up the defense first before a receiver. And at this point, there's really no receiver, in my opinion, that uh, is worthy of that number 21 spot. An argument can be made for Chris Olave or George Pickens or Jahan Dotson. But again, it's a little rich for 21, so you got to look defensive side of the ball. And I have them taking Andrew Booth Jr., the cornerback out of Clemson. Um, they are all, New England is always looking for cornerbacks just because they go through them like no tomorrow. Um, and Andrew Booth has an argument to go in the top 20, so I think at 21, this is great value at a position of need for the Patriots. So. 22 here for the Raiders, and I have them taking Kenyon Green, the offensive guard uh, slash tackle from Texas A&M. This is really just about beefing up an aging O-line, and you're getting a guy that is more than likely a guard but has also played a tackle, so he has (coughs) versatility. Excuse me. 
So you're getting a guy that has versatility. And with McDaniels coming in in this new offense, getting someone like Kenyon Green here is a huge, 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 huge help. So 23 here for the Cardinals. They're grabbing Tyler Linderbaum, the center out of Iowa. Just help out Kyler Murray and protect him a little bit more. There were too many times where he's scrambling around for his life. Just get him protection, and that'll dramatically improve the, the their little standoff. <laughs> Number 24 here, I've got David Ojabo going to the Dallas Cowboys. And Carl Loftus could also go here, but my, my, my train of thought here is Ojabo playing opposite of Aiden Hutchinson got all the hype in the world. If you can grab a Jabo and play him opposite of Demarcus Lawrence, who knows what can happen, especially with Dan Quinn as their defensive coordinator. I think that's a great, great pick for the Cowboys there at 24. Bills at 25, they need to beef up the interior of their defense. They're losing a couple nose tackles, but they already have their three Tekken at Oliver. So I have them grabbing Jordan Davis, the, def- the defensive tackle from Georgia. This dude may not be able to play all three downs in the NFL just because of his size. But what he can do is just stop the run and he can get pressure up the middle if you get if you ask him to do it. So for Jordan Davis here at 25, I think it's a great, great fit for Buffalo and what they need on their defensive line. 26 here for the Titans, and I have them taking just the best player available uh, with George Karloftis, and the slide ends for Karloftis here. But playing him opposite Bud Dupree um, is a great, great, great uh, edge rush tandem. And even if you bring back someone like, or if you bring back Harold Landry, you can put Karloftis in between him and the defensive tackle, and you can still get the same results from Karloftis. So, I love that fit, and I think they could also look offensive line. But when you've got a guy like Karloftis there on, you know, available at twenty six, you got to you got to take him. So twenty seven here for the Buccaneers. Uh, They're grabbing Kenny Pickett. They don't really have money to go spend and trade for a quarterback. So maybe they trade this pick for a guy like Russell Wilson or Deshaun Watson if he gets the legal situation cleared up. Um, so maybe this pick isn't even a, isn't even the Tampa's pick, but for the sake of this draft, I think they, they hold on to the pick and they just draft a quarterback and I have them taking Kenny Pickett. The dude is an improviser. There's going to be a big concern over hand size and, and whatnot, but I just think he's the next best quarterback off the board. 28 here for the Packers and they just need receivers. They're losing Devontae Adams, Alan Lazard, Robert Tunyon, um, Marquez Valdez, Scantling. They just need uh, receiving help. So I have them grabbing uh, Chris Olave, the wide receiver out of Ohio State. At the very worst, he's a solid number two receiver. Um, And if you develop him right, he can be your number one guy for the future. So normally they don't take a receiver in the first round, but I think at this point in the draft, who's on the board, um, they need to kind of switch up the idea and and go with the receiver. 29 here for the Dolphins, and they grab Zion Johnson, the offensive guard from Boston College. Um, he's the best offensive lineman on the board at this point. And they could look on the defensive side, maybe grab an edge just because Andrew Van Ginkle is not, uh, he's not the ideal partner for Jalen Phillips. But um, if you, if, Miami is seriously, seriously going to hitch their wagon to Tua by hiring Mike McDaniel and committing to Tua over guys like Deshaun Watson, beefing up the O-line that severely, severely needs um, improvement is going is is the right pick for them here at 29. So Zion Johnson here, great, great, great pick for the Dolphins. Number 30 here for the Chiefs. Um not really a receiver for them to take here. Uh, and I, I think, I mean, an argument could be made for Jahan Dotson, but I think the receiver that they need is a longer and bigger receiver. So maybe like George Pickens, but um, they need secondary help. They, they, they've got some solid pieces, but they've, they, 
they get a guy here in Kyler Gordon that can really elevate that secondary room with just his his athleticism and the size that he does bring. Um, I think this is a great, great uh, spot for Kansas City to get Kyler Gordon. Bengals here at 31. We know they need offensive line, so they take the next ba- or uh, the next best offensive lineman, and that is Bernard Raymond, the offensive tackle out of Central Michigan. Um, he probably is going to be the right tackle for the Bengals. Uh, obviously, with Jonah Williams taking over the left tackle spot, um, Raymond is personally for me not a first round talent. I can see why he is. I just don't agree with it. And there's optimism in this in the league that he can get better after only playing the position for two years. So I think that kind of upside just kind of helps the Bengals, you know, or convinces the Bengals, yeah, this is a guy that we need. So last pick here in the first round to the Detroit Lions. Um, they they could go quarterback here, but this is where the draft strategy comes in a little bit. Um Jacksonville picks right after him, and then they're on the clock again. So do they really need to take a quarterback when Jacksonville um, has their franchise quarterback? I don't think so. The odds that a team may trade with Jacksonville to go get the quarterback, maybe. Um, but Jacksonville is also in their little you know, retooling and building up phase. So I seriously doubt that Jacksonville would trade that pick because that pick just has so much value. So I have them taking wide receiver Jahan Dotson, and this is solely just because Detroit loves their slot receivers. Jahan Dotson is the top slot receiver in this draft, and they need to they need to get weapons for whoever the quarterback is, whether that's Jared Goff or the quarterback they take in the draft or whoever it is. They just need to get more weapons. So you get Jahan Dotson, you add him in there with TJ Hawkinson, DeAndre Swift, and Amon Ross St. Brown. That's a really good offensive unit and really good weapons for whoever the quarterback is. So that finishes the first round and much, much, much longer of a video than I was expecting. But um, thank you for for uh, for watching this video. Thank you for sticking with me to the end. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Also, let us know how we're doing and, and what you think over on our TikTok page or over on our Twitter Wherever you have social media, we are there. Uh, you can check us out over on Spotify for our actual podcast episode. Um, and really anywhere else you get your podcast too, for that matter. You can go to Google, Apple Podcasts, wherever we are there. So um, that being said, thanks for for uh, watching the video. And uh, be on the lookout for Mod Draft 3.0 coming soon. Alrighty, peace, y'all.